Hi friends and welcome to the video. If you've never seen my face before, I'm Olivia and you can consider me your fragrance obsessed internet bestie here to bring you all the tea about fragrances. It has finally happened, my friends. It is starting to get colder here in Southern California. It's a perfectly gloomy day outside, so I thought what better day than to discuss the best fall fragrances. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on niche fragrances today. But if niche fragrances are not in your budget, do not worry because next week we are going to be doing the budget-friendly version of this video. Now, when I think fall fragrances, I specifically think of a transitional period because in summer you have a lot of bright and sparkling and happy citrus fruity fragrances that are good for hot weather. And then in winter you usually have things that are rich, gourmand, leathery, dark, smoky, but fall is the kind of intermediate in between. So I'm not going to be drawing upon really fruity, fresh sort of fragrances, and I'm not yet going to be going to the very thick, rich fragrances that I will reach for in wintertime. We're specifically focusing on those transitional type fragrances. So if that sounds like your speed, just keep on watching. And I just quickly want to take this opportunity for those of you who did not see my video last week to let you know that I am going to be attending my very first scent expo this year in New York City. That's going to be December 1st and 2nd, and it is open to the public. It's called Scent Explore, and you will be able to try a bunch of niche fragrances from all around the world. There will be giveaways, perfumers, there's an after party. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and I would love to meet you guys. So if you haven't already checked out, go ahead and look at all of the information down in my info box down below. I will detail everything out for you guys. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first fragrance that we're going to be talking about today is from the House of Beau, and this is called Espiritu. The minute I saw the notes on this fragrance, I knew that I had to get my hands on this, and this was sent by the company, and what a wonderful fragrance this is. I would describe this as an aromatic, earthy, woody, slightly leathery fragrance, and you're going to notice a theme in today's video that I like to draw upon those sort of fragrances in fall time. I think about the changing of the weather, the leaves falling, it gives a very earthy scent to the environment around us, and that's what I like to draw inspiration from, and that's exactly what I think about this. So this has tobacco leaf. So you are getting that element that gives you that crisp autumn leaves, along with a clary sage that gives this a beautiful aromatic quality. Think spa. You do have some florals in this, but they're not the traditional florals that you would think in fragrances. You have osmanthus and you have iris. So osmanthus can sometimes come off a little bit sweet, slightly buttery, and a little bit like apricot every now and again, but in this it just adds a delicate floral touch with a very soft hint of sweetness, but it's a very gentle floral. This has a beautiful iris that gives that like slightly cosmetic powdery touch without being overwhelming because for me iris can sometimes take over the composition of a fragrance very easily. And all of those notes sit atop a very gentle bed of leather and oak. So this has a dry woodiness. It has a smooth, delicate leather that does not feel scratchy or harsh. It doesn't overtake the composition. This is very well blended. It's dry, it's earthy, it's a little bit leathery, and it is just so beautiful. I really have to give it up to this house because every single fragrance that I have tried has been absolutely fantastic. Their blends are so masterful. So that is Espiritu by House of Beau. Next is a fragrance that I have to say that when I first put this on, I didn't really understand it. I didn't appreciate it for its true beauty. And then as I wore it throughout the day, this really warmed up on me and created some alchemy. It was absolute magic on the skin. So that is Grandmaster by Mind Games. So I would describe this fragrance as a rose coffee scent that dries down to have a very warm, natural, sweet, ambery, resinous quality, along with a beautiful ebony wood. You guys have probably heard of me talking about Intense Cafe by Montal, or talking about Smoke and Roses by Zimmer. 
These are rose coffee fragrances, and I am an absolutely huge fan of this category, but this one sits on its own. This is significantly more unisex because this is not a very sweet fragrance. The coffee in this is more bitter and dark, and in the base you have some incense that give it almost that roasted quality, but you also have the note of penetone, which gives a little bit of bready sweetness. So imagine you have a natural smelling rose. It doesn't smell mature or thick or heavy. It's as if you plucked a big ruby red rose right off the vine. So a natural smelling rose with a dark bitter coffee, and then you have a rich robust wood in the base that smells a little bit smoky. And then on the deep, deep dry down, you have this beautiful myrrh that gives some sweetness along with that panettone that gives it the ever slightest touch of a gourmand element. This fragrance is beautiful. The lasting power is absolutely incredible. I wore this to work and it was one of those fragrances that it was a creeper. So sometimes it would fade away and I would think, oh, it wore off already. But then I would move my body and I would just get this beautiful waft of fragrance that would circle around me. And it was like magical. It kind of felt like I had, you know, fairy dust floating around me. It has this warmth. It has this comfort. And this is perfectly unisex. And this is elegant. So if you like rose coffee fragrances, you guys need to give this one a try. Next is One Umbrella for Two. I think that this would be a good sort of transitional type scent because you have some darker elements, but you also have some fruity elements along with earthiness from a black tea. So to break this one down, in the beginning, you get a note of black currant that comes off tangy and sweet. It almost comes off citrusy. So imagine blueberry and lemon. That's kind of what I get in the beginning. So you're hit with this sweetness, a little bit of sourness that makes your mouth kind of pucker. But then in comes this smooth tea note to give it an earthy grounded feel along with rice. Now I love rice notes in a fragrance because it can give a little bit of powderiness, it can give a little bit of creaminess, and it really balances out those sweet notes. So it kind of cuts out that like sourness that you get in the beginning. And as it dries down, there is some muskiness, a little bit of woodiness. This has some sweetness, it has a tartness. So I imagine that I'm in Paris and I am having a warm black tea that has some sort of berry undertone to it and I'm sipping it on a cold day in a cafe that has a lot of wooden furniture. It's sweet yet earthy, it's uplifting yet still grounded, it is a very nuanced fragrance. Something about this fragrance when I smell it just makes me feel really really happy. Sticking along with the theme of a tea. So the last one we had has some fruitiness and tartness so you can think of that as a sweeter tea. I say sweet very lightly because it's not an overly sweet fragrance but this one is going to be more of a spiced black tea. This one is Gris Charnel by BDK, and you cannot talk fall without talking about this fragrance. This is a black tea and fig fragrance, and it has the note of cardamom that gives this beautiful spicy edge. There is a vetiver that has a hay-like dryness along with an iris that gives this beautiful powderiness, but where this really sings is the dry down. The dry down on this has sandalwood, and it's that creamy, milky sandalwood. There is a bit of tonka bean, so you're getting that nuttiness, you're getting that powderiness once again, and you're getting this warmth. So think of a warm, spicy cup of black tea with a side of ripe figs, and you put a little bit of milk in the tea. And I'm actually having an Earl Grey tea with milk right now, so it feels very fitting. I might actually put this on after the video because this is so cozy. It is so comforting. Now I'll say that this doesn't project a lot. This is more of an intimate scent, but for a scent profile like this, I don't need it to be beast mode because I would draw upon this on days just like this where it's gloomy and my mood is down and I need something to warm me up a little bit. This is what I would be grabbing for. So that's Gris Charnel by BDK. 
sticking with this theme that we've got going on of tea fragrances, because apparently fall is when I start thinking about warm teas and cozy sweaters, we have Dear Polly by Wilhelm. Now, this is also a tea fragrance, but this is going to take it in a little bit more of a green direction with a little bit more of a darkness in the base. In the beginning, you get a little bit of tanginess and a little bit of sweetness. You are getting bergamot and apple, but then very quickly, this dark tea note starts to come through that is supported with oak moss. So it gives it that mossy, damp, earthy sort of feel, along with a clean muskiness. And then on the deep, deep dry down, this goes into a dark, rich amber fragrance that has an ever slight bit of saltiness. So this one is going to be very unique, very robust. It's a little bit more green, a little bit more mossy, and then as it dries, it gets a little dark on the skin. And this one, although the notes don't say anything spicy, I do get a little bit of spiciness. I'm not sure where it's coming from. This is perfectly unisex and it is quite unique. So if you're going to try this out, I would say get a sample first. Next is a brand new fragrance to my collection and brand new on the market actually. This is from Andrea Mack and this is called Supernova. And I'm sure that you guys have heard me rave about Andrea Mack fragrances. And I actually just attended a webinar that was training over the entirety of the brand. So I got backstories. Art truly inspires every single piece that Andrea Mack comes out with. Andrea Mack is a visual artist that lives in Iceland and she did not intend to get into perfumery. The very first fragrance that she came out with was actually created to be a part of an art installation where an entire piece of art was kind of fractionated into fragrance tester strips. So that way people could take a piece of art with them that was sprayed down with her original fragrance. And that lent people to asking, well, where can I purchase this fragrance? And she said, it's, it's just part of the art installation. It's not really a fragrance but they were insistent and this has blossomed into one of the most beautiful, unique fragrance houses I have ever tried. And leave it to a house like Andrea Mack to take two notes that I do not care for in fragrances, lavender and cinnamon, and make an absolutely fabulous fragrance. So I would describe this as an aromatic, woody, rich, dark fragrance. So in the beginning, you are warmed with some spices. You have that cinnamon along with a cardamom and saffron. That lavender gives a purple herbal touch that really evokes the imagery of a supernova. And in the base, you have a very smooth leather. You have an oud that does not come off animalic or dirty. So if you are a little bit afraid of leather, you're afraid of oud, this on the skin just becomes so regal so expensive smelling, so opulent. So if you like something that is herbal, woody, dark, rich, and then on the dry down has a little bit of smooth sweetness, you would love this fragrance. This is a masterpiece. Next is taking it into a little bit different of a direction. This is going to be a more vanilla fragrance. So this is Orchidy Rouge by Soradora. Along with the note of vanilla, you have a beautiful rum that is very subtle, that gives some character to this fragrance, but the main player is almond. So you get this nuttiness, you get this powderiness, and the powderiness is made even more apparent with heliotrope. This has a benzoin and an elemy, so it has that beautiful warm resinous quality. So to me, this is a very powdery, warm vanilla fragrance that isn't very sweet. So a lot of vanilla fragrances can be on the super gourmand side. To me, this is more powdery, slightly more floral and musky, while still having a beautiful warming characteristic. This is not thick, it is not syrupy, this is airy and light. So this will be a perfect introductory vanilla fragrance that isn't going to be too heavy into winter time. That was Orchidy Rouge by Soradora. Next, we are going to go for something that is a little bit simple in composition. This is Ambrette by Le Labo. And it's bizarre because every time I smell this, for some reason, this smells like banana nut bread to me. And it gives me this warm and cozy feeling because when I was a kid, anytime we wouldn't finish bananas and they're getting a little bit mushy and super speckled and it was apparent that no one was going to eat them, my dad would always make a banana loaf. And I'm not exactly sure 
sure what he put in it, if he put cream cheese in it or something, but it was always super moist and warm and a little bit gooey and soft. It was so delicious. And for some reason, every time I smell this fragrance, that's what I think of. So everyone interprets Ambrette a little bit differently, but this is warm and cozy. It's not overly sweet. It's not overly gourmand by any means. This is much more of an airy version of what I'm talking about, but there is this comfort that comes through. There is a tad bit of sweetness while also having almost a, I don't want to say yeasty or flowery type effect, but almost a slightly roasted or oven baked warmth that comes off of this fragrance. So it is very simple, very straightforward, and it is pretty expensive for what it is. So I could understand if someone wanted to forego this, but this as a layering tool to add just a little bit of warmth to your fragrances is phenomenal. So that is Ambrette by Le Labo. I'm gonna talk about another layering tool. So I actually just got this in my collection and this is from the brand Riddle. And this is their spray body lotion, but they also have perfume oils. And this is their original scent. This is going to be one of those your skin but better fragrances that comes off musky, like clean, warm skin. It's very smooth, it's very fresh, yet somehow transforms every fragrance that you put over top of it to just give it a lot more characters. If you like Milk by Dead Cool, if you like Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume, this is going to be along those lines, but this is a little bit more warm, a slight bit of sweetness. So some of those can lean a little bit salty, a little bit woody. This one, you can imagine, is a little bit more of a clean white musk with some sweetness. This on its own is fabulous, but this layered with fragrances is incredible. And it is one of those fragrances that you could possibly go nose blind to. So you might not smell it on yourself, but when other people experience this on you, it's just going to enhance your natural scent and people are going to look at you and think, my God, you smell beautiful. Not your perfume smells beautiful, but you smell beautiful. Next is a fragrance that is going to be a little bit similar to Santal 33 from Le Labo. This is called Bois de Balancourt by Maison Louis Marie. And you guys can find this at Sephora. This is a niche house and I believe it's a vegan and cruelty free house in their clean section. This is going to offer you that very dry, herbal smelling sandalwood without the intense leatheriness that you get from Le Labo. So I personally find Santal 33 to be a very robust fragrance and I love to smell it on other people, but when I wear it myself, I find it suffocating. I find it a little headache inducing. And this is like a really soft rendition. So you're getting that dry, woody character, but you're also getting a little bit of spiciness out of this that you are not getting in Santal 33. So this has cinnamon and it has nutmeg. So it's sort of warming you up for the holiday season. And on the dry down, it has a little bit of sweetness from some amber. So if Santal 33 was too masculine, too heavy, too headache inducing for you. This is a much smoother version. Do they smell similar? Yes, they smell very similar, but this to me is just much better. Now, if you want to dip your toes into a leather fragrance, I urge you to start here. This is Alchemy by Zimmer. They are an Australian fragrance house, and this has the note of suede in the opening. So you are getting a velvety smooth leather that does not come off abrasive or harsh, and this also has quite a bit of spices. So this has star anise that can come off a little bit licorice, but I typically cannot stand star anise. I do not like that note. It also has the note of pink pepper, which I typically would turn my nose up at, but it's so softly blended into this fragrance. You have a little bit of rum that gives it a dark boozy quality, but the real shining star in this fragrance is a musky dry down with a powdery warm tonka and a little bit of sandalwood. This is a soft, earthy, aromatic, woody fragrance with some creamy touches. It is very comforting. It feels like velvet on your skin and it is not going to be heavy. It's not going to be abrasive. This is a perfect way to dip your toes into a more heavy scent profile while done in a way that is light as air and just feels so smooth on the skin. Next is by the house of Eccentric Molecules. This is Molecule 01 
and guayac wood. And this is kind of a peculiar fragrance because to me, this smells like a bonfire. But I will note that some people have told me that they do get that weird pickly smell. To me, guayac wood is just a very, very dry wood. It almost smells smoked like hickory. So some people say that it smells like hickory barbecue. But to me, there's something very nostalgic about having a bonfire with the warmth of the bonfire, yet the cool fall air around you. This is something that kind of brings me back to my teenage years and just long talks around a fire. This is pretty photorealistic. So if you don't like that smoky wood, this is not going to be for you. But for those of you who get it, you get it. It has this beautiful dry woody touch that is just so comforting, so nostalgic. So that is Molecule 01 and Guayac Wood from Eccentric Molecules. And for the last fragrance we have today, this is from an Italian niche company called Farmacia SS Annunciata, and this is called Via del Incenso. And for those of you who have been curious to try out an incense fragrance, this is going to be a great place to start because this is going to be very reminiscent of church incense. Think of a Roman cathedral, and this is very airy at the same time. So you're not going to get something that is suffocating like some can be a little bit. This also has a kind of pine like quality. It's aromatic, it's woody, it has this airy quality and it is very dry. There's no sort of sweetness. So for those of you who like something that smells natural, earthy, a little bit green, and a little bit smoky. This is going to be incredible. This is such a beautiful fragrance and I picked this up when I was in Rome. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Next week I am going to be doing a more affordable version, so make sure you check back in for that. Thank you guys so much for your support on these videos. It means everything to me and I will see you next Saturday. And until then, take care of yourselves my friends.